Hi, welcome to my web university free education videos. I'm going to uh, show you on Linux um, uh, some commands, uh, some related uh, instructions so you can learn the basics of Linux as well as intermediate level Linux on this session. I hope I can uh, do that. Uh, so please bear with me um, because uh, as I go, I give you instruction and as if you're practicing it on a terminal session. So in order to know uh, where you are on a machine, first you need to know the host name of the machine. Host name, um, host name CTL also tells you that um, you're on a Linux server. And if you want to know the OS version, you can always cat ETC OS release. And it tells you that you're running Ubuntu 20.04.4. And this LTS stands for long-term support, which is at least five years from the uh, date that it was released. So um, once we know that the operating system, you can also do a uname, uname dash A for all and get all the parameters of it. So I'm going to just do a few more commands here. Uname dash N gives you the node name, which is the host name. Uname dash S for the operating system, which is the kernel. Uname dash um, O is the operating system with GNU. And then Uname dash P give you the processor. Uname dash S machine type. Uh, I'm sorry, the um, M dash machine type. S is for the kernel. And if you just forget the syntax of those one, you just type in uname dash dash help. You get everything here. Um, so whether you type in dash S or dash dash kernel name, like here you say uname dash dash kernel name, and then you will get the kernel name uh, there. In addition um, to that one, if you're on a Mac machine, the uname syntax would be similar, but it's not exactly the same kind of option like dash dash kernel name. So uh, you have to do like dash node for node name or dash s for system name. Um, but if you're on a Linux machine, uh, this syntax is always working there. So now we know uh, what machine you are. And now let's find out where we are on the current or working directory. There's a command on Linux called PWD, print working directory or uh, print working, current working directory. So at this time I'm uh, on the current working directory, but now I need to identify who I am. So I can type in ID to uh, identify myself or ID dash G for group name. And then the group name, if I just uh, get it in numbers, notice the group name is 1000 here as uh, the group number. And then the actual group name is the dash gn you have to type in for group name similarly for id if you just type in um uname dash um un it will just say wfp without it a dash u will give you 1000 the user id which is this so now we know um that is uh, the information you can also do a get end password wfp and that would also uh, reveal the same information that is on the etc password file. So uh, grep minus i wlutf etc password also show you the same exact output that you got it from here. So what we are doing it uh, here, you can also do id wlutf. That's what also give you the same information that uh, is showing above here. And then um, with the get end, when we do it, um, if the password file contains this information, it reads it from the password file. Otherwise, it's reading it from LDAP server or something else, uh, an IS or something. So at this time, we're going to just uh, talk about um, locally what you have here. So let me clear a screen. I typed in ID, and then now I say, who am I? If I type in who am I, it says the your WLUTV, my user ID is WLUT. Who is space am I? It tells me that in addition to my user ID, it tells me what terminal uh, I'm coming from and what is the remote uh, host RIP address that I was um, SSH from there. So I SSH to this machine and it's there. So now when I do um, host name and then grep minus I and this, um, uh, the variable here that is there on the etc host file, 
you can see that is actually um, another a node name for mywebuniversity.com. So if I do a, a nice lookup on mywebuniversity.com, that tells me that uh, I'm coming with this IP address. Since I'm coming with this IP address, there must be an IP address. Um, this command is too long, uh, so I'm going to do IPA. When you do that one, it tells you that you're coming for uh, that Ethernet uh, zero in this case, and that uh, 74.28.20 uh, uh, slash 32 is a, a, a IP version uh, for a, a class C IP address. So it is telling you, and then you have a second interface, Ethernet one and all that, Vibro and everything else, Docker, everything is there, all the interface. This is the loopback interface. So knowing that information is good um, because you can also do fconfig, fconfig um, Ethernet zero, for example, to get uh, only the Ethernet zero information. Or you could uh, say fconfig dash A, and then grip minus i, i net, because this i net is the parameter that you uh, will give you the IP address. If you have more than one IP address that are there, and then you could just do it. Like, like this one is the loopback interface. And so I could just say, for example, um, dash um, loopback interface, and then that, that loopback interface here is LO, and then it's this is the that information. So uh, grep127 uh, also on the ATC host file, you can see that it is set for local host. So that is um, when you're doing socket programming, it internally is using this loopback interface and there. Um, we, can, we can talk about that one on other um, classes that I'm teaching like C or C++ or Python with socket programming. So we can discuss that one. But at this time, Let's just come back to the Linux um, identifying ourselves. So we did ID and we said, uh, who am I? And it revealed this is uh, the um, IP address that I'm coming from. So I could also look for PS minus EF grip minus I SSHD. So the SSH or SSHD is the daemon that I'm connecting to, which is listening to port two, uh, 22 on this server. So if I do a net stat here, net stat dash RN, um, show me the um, routing numbers. It is basically telling me that uh, this server is uh, the um, gateway is up and running and it is uh, listening on Ethernet zero interface and it is uh, connecting it through these IP addresses and uh, routers. So at this time I'm going to do um, uh, Net stat, um, if I do net stat minus a n for all uh, ports, you can see this is all big uh, list of the version TCP or TCP version four or six or whatever. And it's uh, just uh, the foreign address and then the local uh, port that is connected to and uh, listening uh, there. So if I just say, what are the ports that are open in this system? I could say net stat minus a n and then grip minus i for listen. Uh, minus i meaning skip, uh, so I don't have to uh, type in all in uppercase, and then uh, skip the, uh, ignore the uh, case. The, that way I don't have to type it in. But notice that port 22 is here. So if I just uh, go here and just do this command, and instead of this, I say grip minus w uh, 22, then it's going to say, okay, on uh, port 22, we are running on uh, TCP version four. This is the um, IP subnet that is uh, open to all. And this wildcard means all. So anybody could SSH and then this was uh, version six. As long as you have a valid login and a password, you should be able to log in, but uh, please don't log in on my system and break it because I'm helping you. Uh, just um, let it go so we can help the community. And uh, even if you're a hacker, try to be nice <laughs> and not just get into other people's system because uh, your uh, job is, as a hacker is to <laughs> do something, go after money, not after people that they're studying for college to get a decent job, okay? 
uh, thanks for uh, not touching these things wherever you are. Um, so, um, uh, but but uh, here we're just looking at the next step and then we can also do LSOF, list of open files, minus I and then 422. And that way, uh, if I'm just looking at minus I for 422, notice that since I don't have the privilege, it did not uh, see that much uh, information from that 422. So I'm going to do a pseudo in front of that one, pseudo ls uh, of minus i colon 22 to see if it um, reveals something that I could uh, read it before. This time I'm getting the 422 information and you can see the main process ID is uh, 1726 and it's listening. And notice that some of the port, like for example, when I did who am I, it, it shows that I was coming from this 136. And one of those ones might be myself, or like, like this one. Uh, this one and that one is me. And then um, 108 is also established. Let's see what is uh, the 108. So you can trace uh, these ones to see if somebody else is connecting to your system or not, uh, and next domain. Uh, address or can and this do this. Let's see. We're gonna go sudo here. Yeah. I have to check on that IP address to see where that one is coming from. But actually this is showing that it is as a search uh, itself is from the root that the process is started. So I'm going to look at the uh, LSOF minus P for this process ID of the, that's the main one which runs as root. So when you do this one, you get the details of all the connection. This is on that process ID, the proc file system that I'm going to cover another session. It is just showing you the current working directory, the executable, the file descriptor, and then the root. So in this case, if I go LS minus LD uh, on, on the proc and then and just 726 uh, is the process on this case. You can see that is a proc file system, which is a pseudo file system. And then that one is uh, basically having all these other files inside it. And one of them is the current working directory. So if I just say on that directory that it's, that process SSD is running, uh, like for example, uh, here, um, let me just do this. And instead of dash uh, this, I could say print working directory of executable. And then it says permission denied because I'm not root. So I have to do sudo here. And then uh, just uh, tells me that it's running from root. Similarly, on this other command, when I did the uh, print working directory, if I just do um, sudo in front of it, that would tell me that this is current working directory of that one is root. So that uh, PWDX, it tells you that the executable file path where it is started. So uh, root was running from there and then current working directory there. And similarly, the file descriptor, if I just do the same thing for file descriptor, this is a directory that has all the files descriptor that are open. So this is a little bit advanced. I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna do, um, beginner and intermediate, but uh, I jumped into a, a little bit advanced, but don't worry about it. If you uh, catch something, that's great. If not, I'll cover those ones. And uh, please uh, watch my advanced uh, level of, um, uh, uh, videos. There are eight of them for chapter four of the Linux uh, Unix operating system. So if I go back to in this um, uh, browser and then make this screen bigger, and go to YouTube. Let's uh, see if um, this one is uh, going to open YouTube uh, at mywebuniversity.com. And then, uh, so by default, uh, when I'm looking at the, some of these videos, uh, chapter uh, four of my book, which is also I can uh, show you on uh, my web university mywebuniversity.com, which is my main uh, page, and that I have these videos av available there as well. As you can see, all of this is, um, some of them are chapter four, part uh, one, part two, three, four. All of them are just going to help you uh, there. 
in particular if this part of uh, part eight of eight is advanced level as well all of them are advanced for chapter four part one through part eight but um what i was just just showing you maybe i covered it on um uh part eight of eight or maybe part four of uh three uh, part three of four or something i forgot uh, where and that is but um what you can do is if you go on the uh, chapter uh, four uh, so this is the, the direct book um the direct path to linux ubuntu which i covered this book and then um and this is basic level intermediate level advanced level on the advanced level obviously you learn advanced stuff and intermediate level, there's some commands. On each of these commands that I cover, and this one is about 88 uh, advanced commands that you can learn them. And then at the same time that while you can practice it online, all you need is a browser and internet access. It's very, very helpful through. I was just reading your mind. And that this, if you just uh, go in here, you're gonna like it. You say, man, this is nice. I wish I, um, when I was in college, I had these options there for me. And when uh, I was in college back then, we didn't even have uh, like uh, like manual pages in front of us. Uh, we did not have uh, access to the internet or uh, or a Unix machine or Vax VMS. So everything we used, it, uh, we had to do it a lot. And then, um, so once you're home, now you can just, at the luxury of your home, you can just use your cell phone to just go my web university, watch these videos online. Uh, as you just go through each commands, you can practice them uh, online or you just watch these videos. You click on it, it takes you to a secure page of uh, YouTube and uh, in one hour video or um, one and a half hour video, you could learn a lot of it. And then um, the one that I'm teaching you today is um, somewhere here, um, uh, I was talking about um, a proc file system. So this PLDD, for example, is a command for proc file system. There's a PWDX somewhere here that is uh, covering um, the proc file system, uh, PWD is print working directory of executable, the LSOF. I just covered a little bit of it. So a lot of those commands. So if you're looking at this particular thing like PWDX, like you can always search here and then it will just show you the host name ctl i covered it just now so you can see some of the commands are really helpful as you go through them and then watch these videos and if you're um an intermediate level there's uh, this chapter three is for intermediate uh, commands again there's about 33 commands here and then there's um videos for them to watch it for example if you wanted to know that disk free space on the system you could just come on my website and say okay you're uh, using a browser you don't need to just uh, log into a linux or a, uh, a virtual machine or docker you just uh, come in and do my cloud computing environment you run this uh, df-h which is a python program that i wrote and it is parsing the information and display the result for you as if you're sitting in front of a unix machine for example, if I'm just going back here, if I do a df-h, I get the same parameter that you get there. And if I do clear screen, say uname-h, notice uname-h is here, and then you could practice that uname-h here. Even you could just come in here, say uname uh, plus dash a, and then that would run the command dash a here. So any command that you're uh, able to run on my Linux machine, uh, uh, with a normal user that you're not adding in a puzzle, uh, you know, creating um, accounts or something, I allow it. So you are welcome to practice those ones and learn it. And if you uh, just uh, decide to click on these banners and get some discount, I really appreciate it because that helps me uh, for my website to become useful. Uh, so uh, at this time, uh, I don't know if anybody is clicking on it. So um, the, there's nothing there yet. So um, what I could do here, for example, if you just type in, um, let's say, uh, calendar command. So you can see if you do the cal command, it tells you today's um, October, the, uh, the 
today is 17 and then um, that information is there. And similarly, if you do calendar here, which we did and uh, this uh, already 18 because this is Pacific, uh, I mean, Eastern daytime. It's already um, 9.31 of our Pacific time is about 1.31 there. Um, so let's just go our 12.31, three hours ahead of us. So uh, let's go back to uh, the training. We're gonna just continue with this one. So we ran the, uh, some of the command and now we not, uh, noticed that the SSHD was running. I was logged on. So I'm going to show where I am currently. And if I uh, get a list of these files, this is LS is giving you a list of these files. If I wanna get a long listing of these files, notice that the, uh, this command, uh, uh, it is a lot more. So I'm going to do uh, this five more. So it will just stop one screen at a time and it will wait for me till I press enter or uh, space bar. Space bar will just go to the next page. So now it is uh, showing up here. I, if I wanna know all the files that has the extension dot bash, I could do uh, that wildcard character like that. And if I just need to know, for example, any file that is stored with uh, w store.bash, I could do that also. So it stored with w and then this. And if I just say, um, let's say it start with w and then um, doesn't matter if I just say um, something in between and demo two. So now it only gets demo two here. And if I want to know like a demo two and dot bash, that is uh, giving me that syntax. But um, while that one is there, I could just say, give me anything with that has demo stuff. Uh, I don't care if it's zero or two or one or nine. So this is uh, the regular expression matching wildcard, well, anything that is start with W followed by the letter D and then zero meaning that if it is um, anything demo zero, demo one, demo two, so all of them are uh, displayed here. I could have just done this and then say a star here. So this would just give me all of that as well. I don't have to restrict it here. But if I don't put this uh, wildcard in front of it, it does not know and that there's no file with just only start with one dot bash. So if I have touch a one dot bash here, now the command, this one would return a one dot bash because there's no wildcard. So in, in order for me to delete that file, one dot bash, uh, I just uh, created as touch with zero byte and then that size is zero byte because I did that touch command. So now I'm going to just um, look at other files, clear my screen, ls minus l store dot search. So these are all uh, dot shell script. And then what if uh, I have anything with dot um, text file? And then um, in order to know the difference of these files, I could say file store.txt and notice that they are ASCII uh, type of text file. And if I say file store.bash um, uh, or .search in this case, they are also um, burn again shell, uh, which is a burn shell and post six shell script and so on. It, uh, it tells you the type of it. So if I say file, star dot um, bash, then they are saying born again shell, all of them are born again shell ASCII text. Similarly for dot search, dot search is there. And then if uh, I have a different type, let's say on a, another directory, uh, let's say on the uh, directory under slash home, if I go uh, this level up, uh, it will tell me and that I can just do this or I could just go two level up from here and get the same thing. So instead of just putting uh, this path, I say relative to where I am, just go to directory up and then uh, specify those ones. So, uh, and this um, will just give me the directory there. If I just do one level and then um, I'm here. So now this that I, in order for me to get exactly this, I have to go three level, one, two, three. So I could be on programs. So I'm going to do that um, directory here uh, with one more level. This would take me the same place. 
as the other one. So now if I want to know uh, the C++ directory, if I, like, uh, I could do C++ or, or uh, just uh, C++ um, plus plus like that, it will just do that. Um, and I have to do a case sensitive uppercase because those are the files that are actually physically there. So notice that when I do this, if I say file uh, that, and then it's going to say that's a directory, but if I say everything that's under it, show me, they're showing that these are uh, C++ source code or sometimes executable if it's object file like that. So if I wanna know anything that are um, dot C++ extension, I could just say, show me dot C++, not this uh, clearing my screen and doing this one, it tells me that the, you're working on all the files that are C++. And then uh, if I wanna just make a backup of that uh, files uh, that are C++ in this case, I could do that one easily by just um, saying that, uh, find me all the files that are C++ like I did here, put it into a, uh, a statement and copy it. But notice how easy it is if I'm just um, doing like find slash home slash wlp slash programs and then C++ minus a name and then I say star.c++. So this one will just um, show any file that are uh, C++ if uh, I look at that directory programs and then slash a dot, meaning that find me all the files in that directory structure that are in the name as um, uh, C++. So then if I just say, go ahead, um, give me a file on it, exact dash exact, and then file. This syntax is telling me that uh, like earlier I was doing a C source, I could run this find command to find him and then run this exact command to execute on, these, uh, on those um, parameters that I found it. And instead of this uh, less than, uh, I mean, um, uh, backslash semicolon, I could also put plus, it's the same syntax. And if I just change the file to just say ls minus l, I could do that. Uh, and then list all of the files there. So if I wanna just back up everything that is the dot C++ and instead of this, I could just say uh, something like um, copy and then um, dot back for some uh, thing. But how does it know that it's going to be that name? And instead of this uh, dot exact, it's much easier to do it within a while read bar because you're passing two arguments. So this is much easier. So I say while read and then the name of the file in this case, the do, and then I say echo, um, uh, copy, uh, making backup, making backup of um, dollar sign file now. So we do this one, and then we do an echo here minus E, uh, so we can just um, have a new line character, the expression minus E, and then here I'm gonna say copy, and then uh, we're gonna say uh, dollar sign, um, sorry, dollar sign uh, file, and then to and dollar sign uh, file dot back, dot back. So we make a backup of dot C++ here. And then if we do now a list minus LD, uh, dollar sign file, and then uh, also dollar sign uh, file, dollar sign file dot back, we get it um, both of them uh, listed. And then uh, we say done and now it's there. So notice how easy it was uh, through that script. We just basically created a backup of every file that we had here. And it says making backup of uh, this file first and then this file second and so on. And then it, as we go and it makes it, Notice the size of the files of the backup are the same. And then the timestamp is different because it, uh, the backup is timestamp of October 18, which is today at this time. And then if I just, um, this, this command earlier that we did here, and we and just say, this is the files. But now if you look at the 
dot back, and we could just uh, get the same thing that the back is there. But now I don't need the dot back, so I'm going to just uh, remove it. And you can just do it in one command, rm. Now the dot back is not there anymore. You can see it is not finding it. But dot uh, C++ is there. And then those are there, okay? So we and did that one. Let's just do a few more things and then we, and this, this part is going to be much easier in, in beginners level. So I'm going to just create um, uh, a few directory here. Uh, actually, in order to do this one in a, another directory, let's just um, have this directory here. I'm going to put this directory into a uh, uh, current working directory. So echo dollar sign current working directory is uh, pointing to no variable. I'm going to say export and dollar sign uh, current working directory. I'm sorry, uh, current working directory is equal. And then we are going to put this path here to just um, be shorter. So when we refer to it, now we don't have to do this. Now, if I say equal uh, current working directory, sorry, current working directory, you can see it is there. And if I just, in the state of echo, I say ls minus l, ls minus l, I just made that variable. Now, every time I refer to that there are variable, uh, it is good to just have it like this. So that way uh, we see it. And then now uh, I say star.bash, I can see it there. So I'm going to just cd to uh, slash temp directory here. And then under the temp, which is the uh, sudo um, file system, it is just um, a sticky bit set and everything. Anybody can create files, but be careful when you're writing into slash temp, uh, there's a, uh, some uh, limited space. You don't want to fill up uh, with tar balls and everything because you could hang your system. And also um, when your system uh, reboots, um, those files will be deleted. So it's not uh, just good recommended uh, for a file to uh, have it as a backup. But I'm going to show you uh, some of the stuff. And then after uh, my demo, I'm going to clean it up. Uh, so it's only for your needs. And I want to just make sure that if you're doing it at a school or work or something, you know what to do, okay? So let's just go on this directory. Uh, again, I'm on this host and then I'm on this directory. And this is uh, ID is WLUTFI. So I'm gonna say uh, echo dollar sign current working directory. Cur current working directory, I have to type it in uppercase. So I'm gonna say, um, let's just copy. Uh, copy and dollar sign current working directory um, directory slash store dot um, text. So now we copy these text files here. But um, notice the text file is only here. I don't need to uh, uh, keep this one dot text file. I'm gonna delete it. Here I'm going to uh, make a directory called demo demos or demo just for short. So I cd to demo, now I'm on this directory. And then here, the directory is empty right now. I have not done anything. So at this time, I'm going to clear a screen, pwd ls minus l. I'm there and I'm just gonna say, copy dollar sign current working directory. And then I could copy everything here with a star uh, or a star dot a star. This would uh, copy it or I could just copy dot bash files here, now the dot bash are there. And then if I just copy the dot sh file, and the dot sh files are also here. Okay, so notice that permissions of the files are the same. So I didn't have to do cp-rp um, because I'm pu putting it on that directory and I uh, have, I'm logged on as the same user. But if you want to preserve the permission that are there, then you do cp-rp. R means recursively, p for preserving the permission. So here on the um, files that I copied, uh, I haven't copied the text file. So let's copy the text file also, the text file. And then this is now everything there. So if I want to know how many files are there, I could do a word count minus L is 27. And I could do the same thing, dollar sign, current working directory, 
uh, slash star and then word count minus L. It's 28 because one of them is um, counting the dot dot and uh, the other one is uh, not. So if I just uh, go through this list and I wipe out everything here, I'm gonna say RM star. And now uh, I uh, delete it back. So this time I'm gonna copy everything from here. And instead of uh, doing uh, one at a time, I'm gonna say copy everything here to this. Now I did the same thing here and then word count minus L. It is a still, uh, it's 29 now uh, because of the path that is there. So uh, let me show you what does that mean? So the, here uh, you see that total, when you do a LS minus L, um, you have to say um, grep minus V and then um, total. So we don't count the um, uh, total, then do a word count and then it's 28 uh, that was on the other system. So because LS minus L by default, the first line it shows a total 112 here, the count and that is there. So we're going to just uh, not worry about that one. And then here, I'm going to um, RM everything. So this we uh, created those files, we copied it a few times and then RM everything, star dot um, bash and star dot search. So I can remove um, two type of files, dot bash and star dot search. And then um, here now the text files are here. And then um, notice that if I just uh, delete, um, let me just copy this one again one more time. So the copy here, it copies everything. But notice if I say, and give me extension of data search, um, when you do the dot, star data search, now notice that there's a dot bash and then data search as well. If you want only data search, then you have to, um, uh, change your search to say only show me and show me data search. Don't do uh, like, okay, I'm going to remove everything with the extension of a search and assume that only is deleting data search because there's a difference between a less minus L star data search and then also with um, uh, a search uh, without the dodge. This one is covering bash as well. So this is uh, much larger. And if you want to remove only data search, and then only do that part. Be specific the, so you don't delete store the bash here. The dot bash is uh, there. So if you remove, uh, for example, for an, a dash sequence dot bash, only it removes that one, but for underscore sequence dot bash is there and everything else dot bash is there. I only removed one of them. So any file that you want to remove like for star, and then I don't care about the extension already. If I only want to uh, do that one, I could do that. So notice that now we have this. And if I just want to say, give me any file or RM anything with while, and then it's done. RM anything with um, sleep, for example, I could do that. But uh, let's just see uh, the content of this file sleep five seconds. Maybe that's what the, it does. So um, ls minus l sleep. And then we say, uh, in order to look at the content of that file, we could say cat minus n sleep underscore five dot bash. This cat command is basically showing concatenating it or displaying it on the screen. Dash n means show me the line numbers. So one through nine. And this one is basically, and that does a for statement and one through five and it uh, uh, writes and then sleeps based on that number of seconds. In order to run a script, that was the content of it. So file uh, sleep underscore five dot bash. In order to run it, this uh, script uh, sleep, this uh, script has to be by the user in W Lutfi in this case that I'm running it has to have executable bit set. Read, write, execute. So let's change mode on this file. I'm going to change it to 644. Um, and then I say sleep underscore five dot bash. 644 means um, make it only um, 
read writable by the owner and um, group and others readable. So if I just do this one, notice the permission read writable by the owner and other people's group. So I'm going to, if I just run like this, leak uh, five dot bash is going to say you don't have the permission, permission denied. And so the permission of denied, meaning that you need to change the permission of this one to be executable. By default, and this should be change mode 755 uh, sleep underscore five dot bash. And that means that anybody on the system that are um, logged on, they can run this script. Um, I have read, write, uh, execute, but the group, which is also W3, has read and execute, not write permission, and then others also read and execute. So now I clear my screen, I show you this, and then I can get also statistics on that file, sleep underscore five dot bash. And notice the statistics of that file, it says it's a regular file because of this dash. This dash, uh, the first character, it says it's a regular file. And then it says the permission is 755, I change it. And th this is the octet number. And this is the actual um, permission for the owner is read, write, execute, for the group is read, dash, execute, and for others read. And then the user ID is uh, in numbers is 1000, the group ID is W. Uh, I mean, user ID and number name is a W3, similarly for the group ID. And then the number of links to that file and the inode number. So what is the inode number? If I go this one with um, minus I, it will show you this uh, inode number of that file. And that inode number is this inode number. And number of blocks that this file is written. The size of this file is right here, 381. So, um, and then um, it's a regular file, as I mentioned. This is the name of the file. This information that we are seeing here is written in a structure in Unix called inode, and the information node or uh, information and data structure. So this is what basically that information is. And then um, the access permission that this file was accessed at this time, it was modified today and it was changed today. Any of those updates are uh, here. So anytime you uh, touch this file, the permission changes, then, then it's going to have a different um, uh, permission. So a timestamp of now, if I say touch uh, this file, and then do a start again on that file, then this one is going to show you a different uh, timestamp that it changed as you can see. So this is good information that you can uh, look at it since um, that file is uh, now executable, sorry, clear screen, uh, sleep. And that file is executable. If I type in file sleep underscore file dot bash, it says that it's um, born again shell. And the way I did identify it, head minus one, it, uh, on sleep underscore five dot bash. On the first line, I put this shebang, user ben uh, env bash. Uh, file user ben env is a executable link format uh, that uh, says, okay, what is the program that you want to run? In this case, is bash is the interpreter. So PS, the, this is telling it that I'm using bash and uh, which bash, it tells me that it is on user bin, but I did not hard code it. I said, use the ENV to find the interpreter. And as soon as you find the interpreter, then every line that is on the uh, file uh, sleep underscore five dot bash, uh, line two through uh, line 19, make sure that you uh, look at the syntax as bash script. Okay, so now we can say, um, uh, bash minus x uh, for sleep underscore um, underscore five dot uh, bash and it will run it and notice because I said dash x it's uh, running it in debug mode on every line it puts the line number that it executes and the output is shown on the bottom but if I don't want to see that one I already changed the permission of it 
So I'm going to do this one without the uh, bash dash x. Uh, we're going to run it with dot slash to run it. And it says sleep one second. Done with sleeping one second. It goes for each number. It sleeps that number of a second. Then it uh, ends the script. Again, uh, to remind you of what this script was all about, you can do cat minus n sleep underscore five dot bash. And that's basically that script. Um, so uh, let's just uh, now uh, create some directories here. I'm going to just RM everything here so you don't have anything. And then here, if I just uh, make a directory in short forms, clear the screen, I can say make dir, uh, make, sorry, make dir and say dir1. So notice dir1 is just created. If I say make dir dir2, it's going to be created there, dir2. And then I could just also say make uh, dir, uh, dir, and then three through um, uh, nine, let's say. See how many is, uh, is it created. So this one, it did not have an understanding of dir three through nine to translate it because it uh, just uh, thought that, okay, that is the syntax I'm doing it. But I'm going to remove all of that. I'm saying rm dir, rm dir, dir star. So now uh, rm dir, dir star, meaning that delete this one, there, this one, I don't care how the extensions are. But I could also do something like this. Say, um, use a for statement, uh, clear the screen. I'm gonna say for, uh, for, for statement for number n, and we're gonna do one through uh, 10. So 10 uh, different uh, directories. And then we say do, and it say echo making the directory um, dir underscore uh, dollar sign num now. And then um, we're gonna just say that and then say make dir and then uh, dir underscore uh, dollar sign and num. You don't want to say uh, do uh, dollar in front of uh, the dir because that's the, the a string that you want to do it, but num one through num 10 should be the one there. And then now uh, as you did it, you say ns minus ld dollar sign, um, I'm sorry, dir underscore dollar sign and then num. So you list it as well to see if it was successful. Then done for this one. So now it says um, making the directory dir uh, underscore one. It did not do this one because this uh, dash was not understood. And so notice what happened here. It created uh, something that I didn't want to do it. So I, I'm going to do rm uh, dir and dir star. This time all I have to do is this echo statement and instead of this one through dash 10, I'm going to say dot dot, meaning that from one to 10, the dash is just uh, not the right format. So now it says uh, that it's creating those directories and list them. And as you can see now, I have those directory there, one through 10. So then if I want to remove it again, I can have a number of ways to, I can remove it. I can say, rm dir and dir underscore, then I could say one through 10. This time I'm going to do that one. It finds uh, this dir underscore one, dir underscore two and everything. And now watch this file are not deleted. Dir underscore one through 10. Uh, so mm, dir underscore one through 10. Let me just uh, do one at a time, see why this one is not doing it. Okay, so it did not match that one because of uh, the regular expression is uh, not finding it. Dir underscore, dir underscore one. Uh, let me uh, do it programmatically with a for statement. So uh, going back to this for statement, I could just say, and instead of making the directory, I'm gonna say removing the directory removing the directory and uh, now uh, and then dir this and then instead of this uh, make dir you could say rm dir 
and then um, now it's gone. So every time it says uh, done, and because the directory we listed, you cannot access it because I removed it here. So now if you clear the screen and do ls minus l, it's on, gone. Um, clear the screen, ls minus l there. So the, uh, on the same token, if you just um, are doing something with the directory uh, matching, uh, let's just do uh, a few more directories. So I'm going to say make dir, uh, dir1 slash dir2 slash dir3. If I try to do this one, it says you cannot do uh, three level because dir1 doesn't exist. Therefore, dir2 doesn't exist and therefore dir3 doesn't exist. If I do this one, I need the dash p to just say whatever the uh, directory level there or just create them. So ls minus l and then it created um, dir1 and then under dir1, dir2 and under dir2, dir3. So here I could just say ls minus l or uh, recursively dir1, it will just show all the other ones. Or I could say find dot minus type d um, and then every file that are there, it will list it there. And if I just say minus exact to see if there's any file under them, and then it will list uh, those ones that are empty uh, 